propensity score matching is a method we use in order to isolate the causal relationship of one variable on another variable. And the example I want to use in order to explain this is the relationship between alcohol and mortality. So basically the question is whether it's good or bad for you to drink alcohol. So we have one case, here we have alcohol. And then the question is, to what extent does alcohol influence mortality? Now, the problem, or the first solution, I guess, could be just to um, say that, let's just take the mean. Let's take the mean of those people who drink alcohol and take the mean of those people who do not drink alcohol and the mortalities and see who dies first uh, or most within a five year period, or who has the highest mortality. So the first solution would be solution one, just take the mean of, of the people you observe, compare means. The problem with that is that maybe those people who drink alcohol are different from the people who do not drink alcohol. So, and this happens if you actually do this in the real world, if we take surveys and see, do the people who drink alcohol die, uh, have higher mortality than the people who do not drink alcohol? It turns out that the people who drink alcohol have lower mortality, say in a five year period. And why is that? It's not because they drink alcohol and then they get lower mortality. It's because they're different people. For example, you could have age. And age will affect both whether you drink alcohol, because young people drink more alcohol than old people. And age will also af affect mortality because old people will die more than young people. So you have a variable that is behind both of these things. And that's going to cause the relationship, and that's going to appear uh, to be a relationship between alcohol mortality, but it's in fact age that's causing this. So we need to adjust for this variable age. We can't just compare the means. So that's what we call um, the problem with just comparing means is, is what we call selection bias. The problem with that is selection bias. So we need to find a method. How can we isolate the relationship between alcohol and mortality and, and take into account that there are different age groups and, and things like that? It could be more variables, of course, and we often call these confounders, the variables that are here. They're often called confounders. So how can we do this? Well, one idea would be to use the second solution would be to use matching. So we would take all the people with the same age and maybe there are more variables like gender here. And lots of variables. Um, so we would take all of these variables and say, what if we match a person with the same age, the same gender, say the same food habits and all that. What if we take one of these people and the person drinks? and compare it to another person with the same age, same gender, who does not drink. And we do that for all the people we have, so we're only comparing the, the, the same people. So now we kind of solve the problem of, 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 in one group we had a lot of different people compared to the other groups, so we couldn't compare them. Now we're comparing like to like, so we're matching. The problem with that is that you need a lot of observations. And we call this the curse of dimensionality here. So I'm gonna say this the curse of dimensionality. And let's go into some details. Why do we have this curse? Well, think about it. How many groups do you need? How many subgroups do we have if you want exact matching and you have two or three or four variables? So say you match on age and gender and maybe some other variables. So you can have high and low age, high and uh, males and females, and you can have good and, and bad food habits and so on. So then you would have to have a lot of observations because you would have to have several observations, many individuals in each subgroup. So one subgroup could be, for example, you have old age and you have males and you have good food habits. But you could also have a young person who's female with good food habits. And there's so many possible subgroups that you need a lot of people in order to uh, conduct this exact matching 
and most likely there will be some subgroups where you have very few people so it's very difficult to do this and in fact you could you could illustrate this even better by what if we use the following what if you can only have two values on each variable like gender could be only, say that's only male and female and say you're only high and low age for example and things like that okay then it turns out that you have two to the power of n where n is the number of variables that's the number of subgroups you will have so for example if you have eight variables and you want the people you compare to be similar in terms of all those eight variables you would have two to the power of eight for possible subgroups two to the power of eight which is 256 so now you have 256 subgroups and within each subgroup you need some people who do not drink and some people who drink alcohol so you need a lot of observations then thousands of observations and most likely you will not have all those observations so you have a problem with, with simple matching in theory it would work but you need a lot of observations what is the next solution then and this is what they discovered in 1983 Rubin and Rusnov discovered a new solution they said and this is the third solution solution number three and this is what we call propensity score matching they discovered that you can take all the variables here all those things that you want uh, the people to, to before you compare with all them you want them to be the same basically on age and gender all those variables you can combine them into one variable and then you can compare people on that variable so you don't need to compare them on on eight variables or how many variables you have you, you only need one but you're going to use all those variables the confounders before you construct that one now let me explain how that works the first thing you need to do is to construct a propensity score and that's it's going to be the probability that you receive treatment in this case the probability that you drink the propensity score is the probability of treatment in this case drinking so how can we how can we find this probability well we just run a logistic regression we know the people who drink in the sample we have the data on that we know whether a person drinks or not and we also know their age and their gender so we can run a logistic regression and find a probability that a person drinks so this is just a logistic regression now after you've done that and this is the second step once you know the propensity score you can match people who have the same propensity score so you would take one person who drinks find another person who does not drink but with the same probability of drinking and then you can compare the mortality of those two people and you do that for all the people you have for all those people you find another person you find a match and the match is now a person with the same probability of drinking and you take the overall average of that so that's basically propensity score analysis and, and and it sounds like magic because now you don't need to match on all the different variables you only need to match on one variable the propensity score but Rubin and Rosenbaum proved that in and they did this in 1983 they proved that this actually works so Rubin and Rosenbaum the proof that this actually works is from Rubin an article by Rubin and Rus Rosenbaum in 1983 so there are two assumptions though to make this work the first assumption you have to make is that you have all the necessary confounders like age and gender I mean this, this method is not it's not magic you, you need to know some information before you can actually use it and you need to know all those variables so you so no unobserved confounders or unmeasured confounders the second assumption is um, that you need some kind of overlap and by that I mean there has to be some people who drinks who had a probability that they did not drink and there has to be some people who did not drink with a probability that they actually did drink otherwise there's no, there's, you don't have any comparison you, you, you remember you're trying to find a person with a, with a probability of drinking say 0 0.3 and trying to find another person with a 0 0.3 probability who did not drink 
so you you need some some overlap uh, within this when it's when the probability is here so these are the two assumptions given this, these two assumptions that you have all the variables that are, that influence this relationship age and gender and so on and you end up with with uh, with some people uh, who, who drink and some people who do not drink in the same is, is uh, with the same probability then you can use this method and that's it thank you